We are back with an update on the AFC North following week eight of the NFL season. Uh, the standings order is the same. However, there were, uh, you know, a lot of things that happened. Obviously, you had four teams playing games. So we'll get right into it with still the division leader, the Baltimore Ravens at five and three. Uh, they won all the way back on Thursday night football against the Buccaneers, 27 to 22 in Tampa Bay. Uh, that final score really makes it the game seem closer than what it actually was. The Ravens had pretty much uh, packed that game away by the end of it. They had to rely on a, a Tampa had to rely on a garbage time touchdown and an onside kick that didn't work. So uh, it was pretty much done and over by the time uh, the Tampa got that 22nd point. Uh, I'm not sure if this game cements the Ravens as like a legitimate contender or even as a legitimate player in the AFC North, but I do know that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are awful, or at least they are right now. They're playing horribly right now, and the Ravens are good enough to take down teams that are bad or just in a rut at the moment. Uh, and their games coming up are, you know, they don't have any games against teams with winning records, including against the Bengals. We'll get to them in a minute. Uh, but right now, all of their opponents right now are either at 500 or below. That doesn't mean that those teams that are bad currently are going to continue to do that or they won't catch a hot streak against the Ravens. But, you know, the Ravens have an easier schedule coming up. And that is the one benefit of finishing last in your division is that their, your schedule for next year is going to be filled with more last divisional place teams. And we'll see if the Ravens can take advantage of that. Uh, I feel like Kenyon Drake has been a really nice ad for the Baltimore Ravens. He's been able to... Uh, contribute and maybe kind of help fill in you know some of the production that you would expect to J.K. Dobbins to have it's really unfortunate for him uh, that injury seemed to have derailed his early career so far uh, you know it's not like he can never bounce back from this or anything like that there's still hope for him as a player but it, it just sucks to see him uh, being so consistently hurt this early in his career uh, speaking of injuries Mark Andrews reportedly avoided Avoiding any major injuries in that game against Tampa, he did go down, I think, in the second quarter, in the second half, and he was out for the rest of the game. But he still does have minor shoulder and ankle injuries, so we'll see how the Ravens handle that if they try to uh, play him, even if he's not at 100%, or if they wait for that those to fully heal. Uh, the Ravens, look, you can say that they're winning ugly or winning against bad teams, but again... The only thing that really matters in this league is that you get the result that you need. And so far, the Ravens have gotten enough wins to the to where they are. Uh, first in the AFC North. Right now, they do have an undefeated uh, divisional record. And they are up on the Bengals by a game. So they're going to have to, you know, if they can keep piling up wins against teams that just frankly aren't as good as them, at least on paper, then they'll be fine. Uh, their next game is on the road against the Saints on Monday Night Football. So we'll see if they'll continue that momentum. Uh, once again, another week where an AFC North team is on Monday Night Football. So I can't really do the update until Tuesday, even if I want to do it earlier. And at the trade deadline, I, I uh, uh, intentionally waited to make this video until after the trade deadline was over. At the trade deadline, they trade a 2023 second and fifth round pick to the Chicago Bears for Roquan Smith. Definitely a huge addition uh, in a trade deadline that saw a lot of movement, but maybe not too many big name players being moved. So getting Roquan Smith seems is a definitely a huge deal. Uh, the Bears pretty much eating all of his salaries, so the Ravens getting him for uh, pretty much nothing in in terms of financials. And you know they're going to be able to have him for the rest of the season if they're able to get a contract done beyond this year. Who knows? But you know the Ravens are making their that that's their move for their playoff push. They're first in the division with an easier schedule. No reason for them to not try to go for something here. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the now 4-4 four four Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, losing to the Browns in a bad way in Cleveland. 13-32 on Monday Night Football yesterday. Uh, the Bengals now have an 0-3 divisional record. Which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. I mean, it, it's bad when you're trying to win a division. Uh, but as far as wild card rankings go, then that's really... I guess that's not too big of a deal. If the Bengals can catch momentum and start you know, winning a bunch of games, then that divisional record won't mean as much. Uh, but when you consider they probably should have won at least two of those games. I mean, the Steelers game went into overtime and the Bengals were ugly. And that Ravens game was ugly for their Bengals too. They could have uh, easily snatched up two of those games. And against the Browns, it, they, it almost feels like they didn't, they didn't even show up. Maybe if they bothered to, you know, put in a bit more of a, of a showing against Cleveland, maybe that game goes a little differently or something. Uh, I feel like Zach Taylor could have tried Joe Mixon a little more against the Browns. Uh, and again, the Ravens have an easy schedule. So if the Bengals want to uh, keep pace with the Ravens, they're going to have to pick up winning ways again. And maybe they have to do, maybe that's something that they can do as their next game is uh, at home against the Panthers. I know, you know, the Panthers, 
you know, they're, they're putting up points offensively and they got that win over Tampa, but the Panthers are still pretty bad. Uh, when P.J. Walker is your best option at starting quarterback, that's usually not a good sign. No disrespect to P.J. Walker. He just hasn't shown that he's something, somebody that you want to be able to consistently rely on uh, as your starting quarterback. So the Bengals, you know, they, they had some good momentum. They had won, I think, four of their last five games. And then they have that showing against that Browns team, which was just dealing with injuries. And you kind of start to wonder a little bit how the rest of the season is going to go, especially with... Uh, if that offense looks like that with Jamar Chase out of it, if they don't make any changes or adjust, uh, what's going to happen? And especially because the Bengals did nothing uh, at the deadline and that uh, season-ending season ending injury, or it's suspected to be a season-ending injury uh, to, to one of their cornerbacks in that Browns game doesn't seem to help. And again, they don't make any moves at the deadline. Uh, you know that, That's really not the Bengals' style to go out and make a big, splashy move, but sometimes you that seems like it's necessary, but... You know, the Bengals stay put. They think that uh, their answers are in their own room. We'll see how that works out for them. You know, we've seen this team win before. So we'll, we'll see if they, they catch his fire again. I think Joe Burrow has shown that he's he's a resilient guy. He's been through adversity before. He has shown that he can battle back from stuff like this. Uh, but that, that Browns game does kind of reintroduce questions about the Bengals that we thought maybe were answered a little bit. And it seems, it seems like no matter what the Bengals do, uh, they just can't get any good offensive line play. They can try to make all the big free agent moves in the offseason that they want. Uh, but the result throughout Joe Burrow's uh, first three years now in the league has been the same, where the Bengals' offensive line uh, has been a tremendous liability for them. Uh, so now the team that beat the Bengals, the Browns, improve, improving to 3-5, and five, get, their, get the win 32-13 at home. Uh, this was their best game of the season so far. Uh, this win keeps their year on life support. It really did feel like if the Browns dropped to 2-6 and six, uh, heading into their, their bye week, that it would just kind of be season's overtime. Uh, I wrote down that maybe they were, with this win, maybe they'd be even more hesitant to trade Kareem Hunt, and that end up, ended up not happening. They were reportedly, reportedly looking for a fourth-round pick. Uh, either there wasn't a team willing to give that up, or that wasn't, or the reports were just wrong, and there there wasn't a team willing to uh, meet what the Browns actually wanted. And I feel like, as far as on the field goes, you know, good things happen when you let Nick Chubb take over the game, and when he is uh, the main focal point of your offense. I mean, other players for the for the Browns obviously stepped up too on offense. You, get, you, don't, you don't just get 32 points if only one guy is playing well. Uh, and I feel like on the defensive side of the ball, the Browns really did take advantage of the Bengals' offensive line being just hot garbage. Uh, the secondary also did a decent job uh, against the Bengals receivers without Jamar Chase. Uh, the Browns heading into their bye week, I say their biggest goal right now uh, is to get healthy and get ready for the next game because you had guys like Denzel Ward, Ousu Koromoa, Wyatt Teller, and David Njoku all dealing with injuries. They weren't able to play against Cincinnati. Uh, hopefully with this bye week for them, they were able to uh, heal up a little bit and come out in their next game uh, as fresh as they possibly can. And then finally, the Steelers dropping to 2-6. and six. They lost in Philadelphia against the Eagles 13 to 35 it was it was ugly uh, I think their offense is going to look bad and is screwed over as long as Matt Canada is employed as our offensive coordinator uh, for Philadelphia AJ Brown just just you know crapped all over the Steelers defense he had himself a hell of a game uh, the Steelers defense just didn't have the horses to keep up with the Eagles in their offense uh, Kenny Pickett he has he hasn't been very impressive and all that but he is a rookie and he's playing on an offense that is terrible, that doesn't have too many elite weapons to begin with. And with the trade deadline, they got rid of one of them. Uh, there's not a realistic outlook to the playoffs for this team anymore, other than just if they go on some uh, miraculous winning streak and they win all of their games or maybe lose only one throughout the rest of the year. Uh, they are heading into their bye week. So if they're going to fire Matt Canada midseason, now would be, I guess, the time to do it. Although maybe they'll just... Uh, play out the string there maybe they just this is their version of tanking is just keeping Matt Canada around usually tanking means you're like cleaning house and you get everybody out but with with Matt Canada and his offense if you're if you're want, wanting to tank and get as many losses as possible uh, maybe, maybe keeping that guy around that's putting an anchor on your offense is the best way to do it uh, now would make the most sense uh, I alluded to it just a little bit ago they did trade uh, Chase Claypool to the Bears for a 2023 second round pick, which is a pretty good haul for the Steelers who are reportedly looking to have been looking to uh, move Claypool for a couple weeks now. Uh, the Bears obviously thinking that, you know, they want to give Justin Fields some more support and a, and a proven receiver. Uh, Claypool is, uh, has been, you know, he's shown signs of being a really good receiver 
uh, throughout his early career so far. But the Steelers want to see more consistency, and the Steelers might also be worried about uh, some of his some of his antics, some of his personality. I don't know. I'm not I'm not too keyed in on the locker room and stuff. But you know, the, the term locker room cancer gets thrown around. You know, to some guys, sometimes it's unfair. Uh, but Chase Claypool, it seems like they were just kind of ready to move on from him in general, as that the Steelers were. Uh, so in general, I feel like the Ravens have a window of opportunity now that they have a one game lead on the Bengals. And they uh, have an easy schedule coming up and they just add Roquan Smith. This is their opportunity to try to uh, really put a stranglehold on their lead in the division. Uh, the Bengals losing important ground in this race with losing another divisional game. They've dropped to 0-3. So if they really want to, uh, if they want to get this AFC North division again, they want to repeat as AFC North champions. They're going to have to rattle off some wins. Uh, they're definitely going to have to beat Baltimore and hope that uh, Baltimore takes a loss or two. Uh, the Browns are keeping their season along, hanging by a thread. Uh, you know, they getting that win against the Bengals was nice, but overall it's still going to be an uphill battle the rest of the way for the Browns. And the Steelers are kind of getting up in, you know, pack it up status, go for next year, start uh, meeting with your scouts, letting them know what they're looking for. Uh, so anyway, that was pretty much the video. Thank you for watching if you did make it this far. Uh, leave a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the AFC North down in the comments, and I will see you in the next one.